Clinical apathy is a debilitating and under-recognised condition that has a significant impact on people across a range of neurological disorders. It's particularly prevalent in Parkinson's disease and is known to contribute to worse outcomes and a reduced quality of life. In addition to this, it also leads to a significant burden for caregivers. But, despite its clinical importance, there remains limited understanding of the mechanisms underlying apathy. In this study, we investigated if insensitivity to reward might be a contributory factor to apathy and examined how this may relate to the severity of clinical symptoms. In order to do this, we created a novel eye movement task that objectively indexes motivation level using pupillary and saccadic or fast eye movement responses to rewards. Measurements were recorded using an infrared eye tracker while participants performed a simple eye movement task. At the start of each trial, they were instructed to look at a fixation point at the centre of a screen. They then heard the maximum reward they could obtain on that trial, which was either 50 pence, 10 pence or no reward. A target would then subsequently appear, either to the left or the right, and participants had to make an eye movement to it. The faster they looked at the target, the greater the proportion of reward on offer they would obtain. This approach was tested in 40 patients with idiopathic Parkinson's disease and healthy volunteers, both age-matched to patients and a group of younger controls. 30 of the Parkinson's disease patients were examined on and off their dopamine medication in two counterbalance sessions so that the effect of dopamine on reward sensitivity could also be assessed. What we found was that while waiting to obtain a reward, pupils actually dilate more when there are bigger incentives on offer. This sensitivity to reward was very strong in young healthy people, but reduced with age. Our key finding was that in Parkinson's disease patients with clinical apathy, there was a blunted sensitivity to reward, as measured by the pupil response. So the pupils of patients with apathy did not dilate as much for anticipated rewards compared to those that were not apathetic. Therefore, there is a reduction in reward sensitivity in Parkinson's disease patients with apathy compared to those who are more motivated. These results were independent of motor impairment and autonomic dysfunction, as assessed using overnight heart rate variability measures. In order to treat apathy effectively, we need to improve our understanding of why it occurs. In our study, we found that dopamine also made a difference to reward sensitivity. When patients were on their dopaminergic medication, we saw a boost in reward sensitivity compared to when they were off. Other studies have shown that dopaminergic medication can improve apathy in patients. So these findings suggest that dopamine, to a certain extent, may increase reward sensitivity and could be useful in the treatment of apathy. In summary, our study demonstrates that reward sensitivity is blunted in Parkinson's disease patients suffering from clinical apathy, and that this sensitivity to reward can be modulated by dopamine. The findings raise the possibility that reward insensitivity may be a contributory mechanism to apathy, and that this might be indexed through pupillary changes in response to reward. The results highlight how physiological assessments in patients can increase our understanding of disease mechanisms and provide a basis for objective clinical markers of motivation in neurodegenerative diseases.